Hi, this is Dr. Rob Rosberg from Hospital for Special Surgery, and we're going to talk about osseointegration of the tibia uh, after a primary amputation. The patient is a 40-year-old who has had um, a heroic uh, attempt at limb salvage, but despite this, really continues to have chronic nerve pain and very, very compromised function uh, of her limb. The plan is a transtibial amputation at 17 and a half centimeters, and we're going to do a soft tissue lift and stoma creation. She's going to get targeted muscle reinnervation for nerve pain, and the plan is to do a single stage osseointegration surgery with a custom made porous coated titanium implant. Preoperatively, you can see the patient has uh, persistent deformity of the uh, foot with uh, nerve pain and neurogenic symptoms. These are the preoperative x-rays. CT scan is done to custom plan the size of the implant, both length and diameter. This is what the custom plan looks like going into the OR. The surgical steps are going to be outlined in this video include all of those steps. This is the uh, exposure for the initial amputation. Uh, and you can see we've got uh, anterior and posterior flaps exposing the fibula. The fibula osteotomy is done about two centimeters proximal to the tibial osteotomy. Soft tissue is cleared. Osteotomy is done with a uh, saw while cooled with saline. This part of the uh, surgery is done with the use of a tourniquet. After the leg has been removed, uh, then we have a, uh, an, a cross-section view of the leg. We find the critical neurovascular structures and uh, perform uh, hemostasis, ligation of the uh, major arteries is performed. Culturing of the um, bone is done as a routine. Exposure of the main nerves, uh, including the uh, tibial nerve and the perineal nerve, are performed for later uh, muscle reinnervation and ligation of all of the appropriate vessels is performed. At this point, before reaming is started, the tourniquet is released. You can see we're starting to see a little bit of bleeding and we're obtaining hemostasis. The next stage is preparing the canal. Here you can see some bleeding because the tourniquet is down. Reaming is done um, up to the appropriate uh, length so we know exactly how long the implant is. And in the tibia, we really focus the reaming on sort of the tight part, which is the diaphyseal part. And I tend not to ream up all the way into the metaphysis because I'm trying not to remove that bone. So you see here reaming done really just uh, at the end. Rasps are then d used to, uh, to prepare the bone, impact the bone, uh, and make sure that the size is uh, appropriate for the implant. The implant has a slightly uh, tighter fit than the last uh, rasp used. Um, the rasp, here you can see the 16 millimeter rasp going in. It should have a certain amount of um, resistance. This is the implant. It's a porous coated titanium implant. Usually when you, uh, you can insert about half of the implant in immediately, and then the rest of it takes some um, gentle yet firm impaction. You need to see progress while you're doing it. So you see I mark it with, uh, with some lines to make sure that I'm getting the kind of resistance and the feel that is appropriate. It's impacted until the implant is, sits flush with the bone. The handle is then removed and the implant is in place. Now at this point, the next stage is some additional soft tissue surgery. We make sure we have the uh, muscle separated from the subcutaneous flaps and, uh, and then TMR is performed. Uh, this doesn't, we don't go into this in detail in this video, but basically the, um, the tibial nerve and the perineal nerve are isolated and they are attached to a, um, um, a adjacent motor nerve for targeted muscle re -innervation. TMR is typically done after the implant is in place. It's important that the limb is not excessively 
uh, moved or manipulated after this fine surgery is done. The flaps are um, created. Anterior flap is separated from the anterior musculature, posterior flap from the posterior musculature, and then we do the purse string uh, closure. The purse string basically creates a, a seal of muscle around the uh, implant bone junction. And you can see what's happening here. Excess muscle is removed as is needed. Ideally, the purse string creates a nice seal right at the implant bone junction. We use non-absorbable sutures for this. Again, additional extra muscle is removed. With this surgery, it's important to, uh, to uh, do soft tissue contouring and make sure there is not excessive muscle that is uh, protruding or hanging down that will impinge upon the, uh, uh, the prosthesis. Optimal soft tissue tension uh, is obtained by removing excess muscle and using this purse string suture. I typically use uh, number one Vicryl, absorbable suture for this. When all is said and done after a purse string, you really should just see the, uh, the end of the implant sticking out and you should have a nice coverage uh, over the bone implant junction. This provides healthy bleeding tissue to uh, nurture that area and uh, help uh, create bone in growth and a nice seal to prevent uh, any infection. Now with the muscle closed, you can see you've got the posterior uh, flap that has been separated from the muscle. That's important. Uh, the stoma is either created in the anterior or posterior muscle flap. Uh, typically, it will be the posterior flap. You try to remove some of the subcutaneous fat. Uh, it's a balancing act. You don't want to remove too much uh, because then you can devitalize the tissue. But um, having less fat and having less bulk uh, at the stoma is, uh, is an important principle. Now with the appropriate amount of uh, tension, you can see the, uh, the posterior flap is being pulled up with the appropriate tension and the stoma is being created. It's all done as a single stage surgery. And that is one of the big advantages of a single stage surgery is that right then and there you're optimizing the tension of the soft tissue and to ideally create the, uh, the stoma. So the stoma has been created. Um, these are quilting stitches. These are, non, these are absorbable sutures that are placed that will again sort of hold the flap up into the optimal position. Again, to prevent sagging. You don't want sagging. Uh, of the tissue and so it's a nice um, lift and uh, nip and tuck so to speak. Using plastic surgery techniques you can see that we can um, ideally um, contour the soft tissues so that there is optimal closure and optimal tension. Closure is typically performed with non-absorbable excuse me, with absorbable sutures, a zero vicro layer, and then a, um, uh, a subcuticular uh, monocryl layer. Clo closure is performed over a drain. The staples were just put in temporarily to uh, help with uh, planning of the closure. This last layer is a, a V-lock subcuticular 3-0 uh, monocryl closure. You'll notice that the end of the implant just kind of protrudes from the, uh, from the stoma. And at this point, I get to choose the, uh, this, the length of the dual cone um, that is determined based on just sizing and, and an anticipation of, of uh, whether there'll be any sag of tissue. Uh, this gets tightened down with a bolt. The... Uh, 
The implant is protected from rotational forces. This is the taper base, which is also placed. Uh, as it is tightened down, it also is, uh, th these um, tools are used to protect um, any rotational torque on the uh, implant itself. And this latest piece is called a bushing, uh, which is designed to be a protective mechanism um, um, and protect the implant in case of excess force it's designed to give. This is what the abutment looks like. And that is the adapter. The adapter is what the prosthetic leg will be attached to. That's what the patient will take on and off. And that's it. The, uh, the stoma is covered with a, with a zero from gauze and a uh, cling wrap. Postoperative x-ray looks like this. Um, over time, we're seeing that the bone gets um, thicker and stronger because of direct loading through the implant to the bone. The long-standing x-ray is, is uh, shown here. And the patient is doing quite well. This is an early post-op x-ray showing the appearance of the uh, stoma. I want to thank you for your attention, uh, and I hope that you have found this uh, video on osseointegration, limb replacement surgery, focusing on the tibia to be helpful. Thank you.